ready? All right, well, I'm gonna give everybody vertigo spinning this thing around. Um, this, is, uh, this is your ABB variable frequency drive training for the, uh, for the new building. Um, we provided uh, drives for the pumps and, uh, and then turns out for all the air handlers as well. So this particular um, section was just the pump drives, but they're the same model, um, same setup, same everything as what's on the air handlers. So it'll apply kind of across the, um, <clears throat> across the uh, both platforms. Um, we, uh, I'm not really sure how familiar everyone is with VFDs. Um, but I'll go over the, the real nitty gritty basics and we'll uh, and kind of go from there. A, uh, a variable frequency drive is a, a device that, that, that allows you to uh, um, change the speed of an AC induction motor. Um, and, and the reason that that requires a special device is that uh, with an AC motor, the, the speed that it's spinning is based upon the, the switching frequency um, of the power. And so with, with 60 hertz power coming out of the wall, uh, if you have a two-pole motor, basically every time it switches, it's going to spin halfway. And so you're going to get 60 hertz out of your motor, and um, that's it. There's no way to change that. If you drop the voltage, you're just going to lower the horsepower, but it's going to spin at the same speed with less power. And so a variable frequency drive allows you to actually take 60 hertz incoming power and change it to whatever frequency you want and maintain the same horsepower that the motor needs. Um, and it does this uh, with a technology called pulse width modulation and uh, instead of having a, um, a straight sine wave type uh, electricity you're gonna have uh, it's gonna fake that using small bursts of DC power so it, it, it takes the, the the power coming out of the wall charges up a bank of capacitors and uh, and then and then discharges them in 30 thousand times a second you know it just it, it's really really quickly basically just faking a sine wave pattern and so this is a uh, uh, let's see this is this is kind of the the layout the as the power comes in the converter basically changes it to to DC it charges up a, a bank of capacitors um, so that you have this bank of DC power and uh, and then the inverter takes that DC power and makes your um, AC power coming out essentially so we've got kind of this is your your line power with the smooth sine wave and then it translates that into DC power and then back into AC power And by changing the, the, the amount of time that the, uh, the bursts are happening, um, you essentially, this is how you get a sine wave. So you, it starts off with really short bursts and the bursts get longer when the, the power would be peaking coming from, the, from a, a standard AC source. Well, that's, that's good enough for now, for just the, the basics. I'm going to uh, drop that and go to the, um, the uh, ABB drive itself and just kind of uh, what the panel looks like, what interface you might uh, be having with it. Really, you, you shouldn't be needing to deal, I mean, do too much with it at all. Um, but the, uh, um, 
you know, it, eventually, at some point, you know, if there's some uh, parameter that you need to change, that's, you're going to want to be able to kind of poke around on it. And hopefully after this, we'll be able to go to the pump room and mess around with one. Okay. And that's one good thing about them. You can, you can mess around, you know, without, it, it will ask you, do you really want to change this if it's something important? So, you know, don't, don't be afraid to go into the parameters and see where it's set. This is a, the basic um, just control panel. Uh, these two buttons right here are called soft keys and they, uh, they change. So they are corresponding to whatever is on the, the, the actual readout. And the rest of these are self-explanatory. This is your um, hand auto button. If you hit it, it'll say hand. And that means that it's no longer being controlled by the BMS. And if it's in auto, it is being controlled by the BMS. Um, I don't remember how we left these set up specifically. Sometimes they, they don't want us to be able to put it in hand. Um, just as easily as hitting the button you have to go in and change a parameter and then do that but depending on it could be just that easy the main parameters that uh, you'll be uh, looking at or the, the sorry the, the the main screens that you'll be seeing when you come in uh, you'll see that that first screen with just you know the the hertz the the time the and it, if there's an error code it'll say the, that there's an error etc. If you uh, you come in and and you hit the um, the menu button this comes up and if you then hit enter for the parameters you get this list and so the parameters are all all named with a four digit number. The first two digits are what you'll see here. We call them groups. So if you know, you're on the phone, and this is the way a lot of VFD service goes, is you're on the phone with somebody and they say, okay, go down to group 10, and you're looking at uh, parameter 1032. What's it say? You know, and, and then you can uh, change it. There's a startup assistant we do the startup, you don't have to worry about that. The fault logger actually takes down, I think it's up to, uh, it takes four faults and it takes every reading you could want to know, like at the time of the fault. So it'll take the, the time, obviously, what the fault is, and then what the AC current output to the motor is, what the amps are, what the DC bus current is, or uh, DC bus voltage was, etc. It, it logs all of that. And then it has more fault histories beyond that, but just without all the data, it just says the time and the, uh, what the fault was. Um, all of the clocks should be set up, and if you walk by one and you don't see a clock, I encourage you to jump in there and set the time um, just because when we're troubleshooting faults it's absolutely priceless to know when it happened because if it's at the exact same time you're doing a generator test or a you know some other electrical things are happening or some sort of spike you can kind of narrow it down with that but for the most part the the interface is 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 very uh, intuitive and you uh, um, shouldn't have to worry specifically about all of the, the different parameters, but know that there are, um, there are a number of, here we go, um, inputs and outputs that are controlled at the drive, or at least possibly controlled at the drive. There's a uh, um, 
analog, there's four analog inputs and uh, six anal or digital inputs. So, uh, and I don't think we have many set up because we're all running on communication bus for the pumps, but uh, this can control tons of different things. It's a, it's a mini, um, you know, uh, PLC that you can program to do whatever, whatever it is you want it to do in, in corresponding with whatever process it is that you have it hooked up to. Um, the, let's see. There are two, uh, <clears throat> two similarly named parameters that get confusing. There's the run enable and the start stop signal. The run enable is, is typically a safety. So if, uh, if the drive is not running and it says something like run enable missing, that means there's a safety tripped. Um, and it's usually, you know, uh, an airflow switch or uh, that's for a fan for pumps. I don't even know what it would be. Um, but it, it would be something in line with that that you could then start troubleshooting. The start stop signal is Obviously, that's the signal being sent to it by the controls. Um, they are, are pumps, so we have them set up to, to ramp up and down um, so that, that you don't, with a fan, we let it glide to a stop. Um, with pumps, we have an acceleration curve and a deceleration curve, um, and that can be adjusted if, if there are issues if it's ramping up too fast, you might see uh, an over amperage um, alarm, not necessarily an, a, a fault, but if it, it's set so that uh, there's a range of, of amps that are just totally normal, and then there's a range that's alarm, and then above that is fault. Um, and as soon as, and so lots of times they'll be set up as they accelerate, they'll go into that alarm but then once they get up to speed, they're dropped down in the normal. And uh, that's totally fine. There's two ways to deal with it. You either move that gray area up or you uh, change the acceleration time. Um, those are really the, the main points I wanted to go over as far as function. The maintenance on these is is fairly straightforward and uh, and written out. The the O and M's that you have look like do I not have it in here? I might not have it in here. Oh well. Well, the O and M's that you'll have in your book are. Uh, um, are a little bit uh, dated, but not incorrect. They, uh, they have um, uh, a parameter list that looks like somebody typed it on a typewriter. I don't know, it's, it, somehow it's, it's, this is the standard O&M for ABB. But anyways, the, uh, the important part of it is the, the maintenance list is, is laid out with you know, check these things, and then it's got years after install, and it, and it has an I for inspect, a R for replace, and I mean, it's laid out. After three years, you replace the fan. You know, every three years, you gotta replace the fan. And it's a really simple, it plugs into the front, you know, you know, pop out the plug, just pop out the fan, pop in a new one, plug it in, done. And so, um, and, and every year they should be kind of, you know, run over, blow the dust off of them or, you know, uh, check, make sure all the connections are, are tight. Um, they suggest using a, an infrared thermometer to, to check the connections just to see if they're hot rather than trying to torque it again because retorquing can sometimes make it come loose later. <laughs> um, in, our, in our application, we're not worried about 
um, moisture. You want to keep them cl clean, dry, and uh, and they'll be happy. They they run. They'll run for for a long time. Um, you have a two-year parts and labor warranty from ABB, um, and I'm trying to remember if that's beyond your the one-year building warranty, but I, I think that it's uh, I think it it coincides. So you'll have a year after. Um, where you contact Oregon Air Reps because we're the ABB distributor, the HVAC distributor. Um, anybody have any questions that I might be able to answer with slides or we can go down there and take a look at them? Good? It's my, that's my favorite kind. All right, so I'll go over real quick a couple of things. It looks like these all need their time set. There's probably one for everybody, so you gotta get in here and poke buttons. Uh, um, so when you walk up, the uh, things you're reading are, are the, the percent speed and the output current. In the upper right-hand corner um, is, is your hertz. Um, 60 hertz has always been the, uh, everybody thinks that's 100% full maximum speed because there's 60 hertz coming out of the wall. But with a VFD, we're totally manufacturing this wave, so 100% can be whatever we want it to be. So, you know, if, if you know, we can run fa fans at 90 hertz, we can run pumps constantly at 52.6 hertz. So I can say 50 hertz in here and be running at 99.8%. Yeah. I think that they didn't change any of those. I think that we still, I think with these we're set up as 100% as 60 hertz. That's kind of the default, but um, it's not always the case. So, um, but when you walk up, you see menu and it'll bring up the list. Uh, hit enter, go into parameters, and this is, these are where you'll see the groups, like I was saying. Um, to set up the time, we're gonna go down to date and time. Hit enter. Clock visibility, we're gonna show it. Time format, we'll go, what do you want, 12 hour, 24 hour? 24 hour. 24 hour. Dates. Do month, month, day, day, year, year, year. Time is nine eleven. And the date is right. So now you'll see in the in the middle down there at the bottom, it has the time. So any of these that don't have it. Don't have that saved. And then <clears throat> um, we'll go back into the menu and I'll have you scroll to the whoops, time and date parameter backup. We're going to do an upload to the panel. So this panel is, is like a USB memory stick. You can copy all the parameters that are on the drives board onto this and and save it move it to a different drive or whatever but um, all the parameters are stored in the drive so if this gets cracked and broken all you have to do is put a new one on and you can upload the parameters from the drive back onto that keypad so it's um, this not to the not to the keypad so what you do is you go into the the parameter backup and then you um, upload to the panel and it won't let you because it's running um, 
and we don't really need to right now we've only really changed the time so uh, we lost power for an hour mm -hmm. did you keep the memory for an hour yeah yeah it's uh, non volatile memory so it it it's non volatile it won't go away it's it's just like a USB stick it doesn't need okay. power to, to keep the memory um, they uh, they because they're running on com they're gonna um, do whatever automated logic is tells them to do when there's a power outage but the default is to come back to the state they were in before the power outage so um, if you have a bunch of them that are on the default you got to be careful because they'll all come back on at the same time so but because these are running on com they've got they're being controlled by automated logic i'm sure they have some sort of sequence for that but I mean, sequence for the startup. yeah so basically uh yeah there's a parameter in there for uh for the automatic reset that if you enable it it, it wait some random amount of time before it starts but so they all will come on at the same yeah. time you know, at least five seconds and uh, yeah uh, i feel like i'm telling you all the bells and whistles that you have but aren't necessarily using so these things these drives are, are really versatile they're they're made for um industrial processes so these things are capable of 100 percent torque at zero speed so it basically, I mean, it, it's not good for the motor. It's going to get hot quickly, but they can do it. Um, basically holding, uh, you know, a, a load at zero speed, um, which is a pretty neat trick with an induction motor. Um, if a drive does need to be replaced, uh, this model um, includes a disconnect it's a uh, but the disconnect is separate so if you needed to replace the drive you can just get a, a base model drive without the disconnect pop this out put a new drive in this disconnects not gonna need replacing um, but I suppose if you guys want to jump in here and Try and set the time on all these. I'm gonna go check and see what the other ones are here. This is how you, uh, you we're gonna say replace the fan. This the keyboard just kind of wiggles off. It's a it's a regular Cat Cat Five plug, um, and so this is another you know bell and whistle that you probably never use, but. If this thing is up in a rafter, it's hard to get to. We f figured out you just take a regular old cable and you leave it running down somewhere so that you can plug in and deal with the drive instead of getting up on a, a ladder. What's that? Yeah. So you, there's also a little, you can get a wall socket for this and then the back of it is just a cable. Um, so you take the face off and then it's just a, a Phillips screwdriver. And then these wings kind of gotta kinda gotta negotiate the disconnect a little bit, but be okay. So what we're looking at in here this is your communications cable um, these are all I have to look and see what they're set up for but uh, it looks like we've got um, some reference uh, so they they're probably taking a, a hard um, amp reading out of a01 and then the digital inputs and outputs uh, probably set up for safety fire alarm maybe sequence after a you know not sure what it's set up for but 
those are all running back to a, a, an ALC controller somewhere. Um, but for the, uh, the fan, once you get in here, the There's two kind of clips on the side, if I remember right. This thing just kind of... pops up and out. Oh, I see what's going on. Well, it looks like the screws that they used on this model to attach to this back sort of uh, gusset. They're gonna get in the way. Actually, maybe not if I tilt it. But anyway, you might have to move those screws, but the fan literally just pops out and you can pop a new one in. The, um, the wire, the plug, follows. I'm not sure where it is right now, but we can mess with that all day. There's no real need, I guess, right now. Um, sometimes, so it is, it's one of the, the standard setup things to, to, to make it so that the panel loss if the panel comes off it's not a fault the default when it ships is if you take the panel off it goes into fault and so you, you can tell that'll happen the little red light there you'll know then that the drive has stopped and is in fault and if it wasn't before and now it is it's probably because you took the panel off and um, there's just a parameter to change and these can be amazingly annoying to get back on, um, but especially when you gotta get it up and over stuff. All right. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Wasn't too bad at all. I'm not annoyed at all. <laughs> cooking, <laughs> cooking with gas. Sometimes I I have to go, I have to like take a break and just because oh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna throw this thing off a cliff. <laughs> but um, I was showing them over there, and it's not necessarily a drive thing. It's just good to know in this room, these two are redundant these two and these two so one of these two should be running one of these should be running and one of these should be running so these are back up right now but I imagine they have some sort of after so many hours then they switch something like that um, and right now all three on this side are going and these aren't and on the over there, it's it's a mishmash. So interesting. So basically, one set of threes will be running, and the other. Yeah. So. These two pumps are in parallel. One's a backup and one's, and then they switch which one's running, which one's not. Right above the serial number. So it's an ACH 550. Um, and then PCR is the model that has the disconnect on it. The UH is just this top half. So, uh, these are PCRs, but you'll probably re replace them with a UH. 
which is just this top chunk. Um, and I'm not sure what's been spraying or dripping down, but you might want to get a little sh shed for them. But. What well, else water, is good to know? All over water, it's done, right? Not always. Not always. <laughs> but, uh, but yes. I mean, that wouldn't be good. No. yeah. I think that there was, I'm trying to remember when it was, a couple years ago, a glycol pipe exploded in the penthouse above Uncle Phil's. Uh, box at Hayward Field right before the Olympic trials or national champ, some big track meet, and just sprayed 10 of these drives with just bright orange or yellow or whatever and <laughs> just sticky and yeah, none of them survived. And luckily, we, we have these, we have the UH on the shelf in Eugene, so. Um, We were able to get something in there, at least. I'm trying to think. So we shouldn't be touching anything in the parameters? Nothing? Nothing to speak of. Um, if if uh, something needs to be changed, it's gonna come up, it, you'll have a symptom first. It will be troubleshooting something. This one keeps over amping. All right, well, let's go look at when it's over amping and if it's actually over amping or if it just thinks it's over amping, you know. Is there any of the, the books that came with these laying around anywhere? They don't send them with books anymore. No. CD-ROM. <laughs> because the book is this thick. It's got, it's got a little extensive, yeah. But some of these drives we have over at the main campus, there's a book about that thick. So there's a, oh yeah, there's a small book, right? It's yeah, like this. Basic, basic operating. Yeah. So I have the, uh, I have a real basic book. I meant to break those out. I don't know why I didn't. They're back in my backpack. Um, of all the faults and alarms and what they mean and what they right. might be. And then you'll want to you look at that the book from the other one or the, the CD-ROM for the actual operations manual. And that's this one right here. Um, UH, here we go. Boo. Specific number, like tech support, you just call you guys local or? Yeah. Um, the, the guru is, the, the guy that seems to be able to speak to these things, he's like the VFD whisperer, I don't know, it's Bob Faziato. I don't know if you've met him or, he, uh, he's out of the Portland office, but he's down here all the time working on drives. Um, all over the state so so if if you have any questions give me a call um, I'm the person in town that knows the most about them probably and then yeah I might have left them all up there but um, and uh, if I don't know I'll call Bob um, and if something needs to be significantly changed out I, got, I won't come in and change out boards or anything. Um, ECC service uh, from Portland is the AVB um, service group that can actually, they're the only ones that can actually do warranty work on the drives. Um, but that's, yeah, all out of Oregon Air Reps. Um, just, they, they do have it so that you can put it into hand mode. Um, if you put it in hand, display changes, it says hand. And uh, then the, uh, 
the frequency that's up in this upper right hand corner turns black or whatever, that means you can control it. So when it's in hand, you can run it up to, to whatever speed you want. I wouldn't run it. Oh, it just doesn't go full blast. You got to tell it. Yeah. So um, what? So I wouldn't run it below 20% for too long. That gets the motor hot. Um, but so now, whenever you put it into, so when it's in auto, you see that the the numbers light. When you put it into hand, it goes dark and it goes back to zero every time. So you got to run it up. Um, the set points, uh, it, on, the, on the sheet it asked me to describe how to do the set points, uh, are all going to be done at the front end. Um, so if, if you need pump, you know, 1-09 to and 1-08 to give, you, if you need more head, you need more flow or whatever, you can increase it there. Um, if for whatever reason, uh, you have to go more than 60 hertz, then the default of stopping at 60 hertz might need to be changed, but that's something you would call us to do anyways. So, it's all, set points for the most part are going to be all at the front end, unless there's a major change. All right.